Merry Christmas everybody and welcome back to a very special video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be traveling back to the year 2003 and taking a look at Microsoft's Winter Fun Packs for Windows XP. These were a collection of customization packs that were released by Microsoft for free back in 2003 to celebrate the holiday season, and that's why I thought they would make a great topic for a Christmas Day video. Now, we did a video similar to this last year where we took a look at the Christmas theme for Windows XP, and that was released in 2004. And even though it only changed the Luna variant to silver, it did add some mouse cursors, desktop wallpaper, papers, screensavers, some new sounds, all that good stuff. These are a little bit different. First of all, the fact that it's actually a collection of four packs bundled together. They all focus instead on really modifying and, and adding new content for various Windows XP applications like Movie Maker and Windows Media Player with some extras thrown in there as well, even some previews, which I think is, is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So like I said, four separate packages means you have four separate installation files and we're going to start out with this digital photography one. They all follow a very similar setup process here. It's literally identical, and it doesn't matter which one you install first because when you click on finish, it will open up this program right here, and this is your central hub for getting access to all these customization options. So we just installed the digital photography one, so the only option we have in here is digital photography. These two, for Movie Maker 2 and Media Player 9, are grayed out, and you would have to click on this download button here to go to Microsoft's website and download the installation file for that and go through that setup process. Now, Games for Windows XP will come back to because, yes, it is here and it's a little bit more interesting uh, in the sense that none of this stuff is actually winter-related and it's more of a bonus as opposed to a theme pack or a fun pack in and of itself. And just like that, we've got everything installed. So we're just going to go down the list one by one, starting out with Windows Media Player 9. So let's see what this pack had to offer. So you go in here and you get this list, and these are all of your various customization components. So you've got a couple of skins here, you have a visualizer, you've got a plugin, and even a bonus. Uh, this is actually pretty funny. This is the Plus Dancer. Now, there are some Microsoft Plus, they're essentially like trial versions, or I think limited version is a more appropriate term, because they're not really trials at all. Uh, there's no time limit or anything like that. But uh, so Microsoft Plus Digital Media Edition was out at this time, and I've done a video on that like years and years ago on this channel. So to kind of incentivize you to purchase that, Microsoft included uh, two limited versions of some applications from Microsoft Plus DME right here. So we're going to definitely take a look at that. And this is a separate download, as you can see, but I do have it downloaded in this folder here that I've got on the desktop. And by the way, if you guys want to take a look at this on your Windows XP computer, check the link down below because I'm going to be uploading a full package with with all of this stuff bundled together, uh, all these installation files, everything you need to the Internet Archive, so I'll have that link down below. So the first thing we're going to check out isn't really that exciting in my opinion. It's still very useful, but there's not really anything visual that it really customizes, but this is more of a functionality that it adds to Windows Media Player, and that is the Holiday Music Auto Playlist Pack. So this gives you the ability to create a playlist automatically of Christmas music, for example, that you would have in your My Music folder. So instead of having to go through and pick out the songs that you want and make your own playlist, this can automatically do that for you. So if you click on View the Auto Playlist, you've got three folders here for Christmas, Hanukkah, and Kwanzaa. So we can go into Christmas here, for example, and you've got all fresh tracks and one data CDR worth. So if you were going to make a music CD, for example, you can click on this and it would, uh, well, first we got to set up Media Player 9 here. So we'll go through that and finish. And if you had Christmas music in your library, it would make a playlist uh, pulling from those songs and allow you to take that and burn it to a music disc much faster than going through and picking the songs yourself. Though the thing is, obviously, if you want to have control of the music, you should just pick it yourself and then put it on the disc. Uh, this is kind of a way just to make it easier, but 
From what it sounds like, it just picks really random songs based on certain parameters that these playlists specify. Um, but still, you know, I personally would just find it easier just to make, just to pick the songs that I want and put it on the disc or on a playlist in Media Player that way. All right, so now we can get into some of the more visually interesting stuff, starting off with a visualization. Windows Media Player visualizations have always been really interesting to me and is something I may end up making a dedicated video about because uh, I just find them really fascinating. I remember using my old XP computer when I was younger and just spending time just in Windows Media Player playing music and just going through all the different visualizations. They were just so cool to me. And this right here is a winter themed one. It's called the Ice Storm Visualization. Not Ice Tray, <laughs> Ice Storm. Uh, it says this cool winter scene makes a perfect companion to your favorite holiday playlist. Watch as ice formations grow and melt to your music as snow no gently falls. So we're going to launch Windows Media Player and I do have, as you can see, we've got canyon.mid in here. This is actually just an mp3 converted version of the MIDI file, but I've got a couple of songs in my my music folder. So we've got uh, a converted copy of onestop.mid, which is also really interesting. And we've got Acid Jazz, which is a track that I use very often for the background music in these videos. So we'll play canyon.mid here. And these are the visualizations if you've never seen them before, though I'm sure if you've used Windows, you've at least seen these and you've probably messed around with them. So you can go through them here, you know, all that good stuff. And we can change it if we go to view up here, uh, if, <laughs> if Windows Media Player just froze. Uh, if we go to view and we go to visualization, so this is where you can pick uh, you know, from like, instead of just having to scroll through them, you can pick a specific one here. And you see, we've got this new winter category and here's ice storm. So we select that. And now when we play our music here, there you go. So we've got what looks like a static background image of a, like taken in a, in a forest somewhere during winter time. And we've got these ice formations here slowly bopping up and down and there's snow falling in the background. And if we pause it, it will, there it is. So now all the ice formations have stopped, though we still get the snow in the background and that bottom layer eventually fades away. And okay, so the snow eventually starts to stop falling as well. And then now you're just left with this background image. So next up, you've got three skins for Windows Media Player. So we'll start with the Frostbite one. So uh, we're just gonna launch the skin here. And there you go. So here's what it looks like. We can hit play and continue playing Acid Jazz there. So yeah, you got this cluster of controls here. You've got your, this looks like your volume wheel, yep. And then you've got the time that you're at in the song and the author and song information scrolls right there. Uh, you've also got Ginger, Wo so you have Ginger Woman and Ginger Man. So we'll do the Ginger Woman one. And so there it is. So you've got this piece of paper in the background with the artist and song information, volume controls, and then uh, you've got your controls down here and along here as well on the arms. And when you like hover over it, you see it like a little bite comes out of the bottom right there and the facial expression changes. So there you go. And we can just like, do <laughs> we can just do this constantly. Um, but okay, so we'll close out of that. We'll move on to the Ginger Man one. And the Ginger Man one doesn't seem to do that same animation and all the controls have been moved to this ornament here. And it looks like that the, yeah, so the song and artist information is gonna be in the ornament itself. So this is more kind of clustered together. All right, so next up, we're taking a break from the visual customization stuff for a minute to take a look at the Media Info Exporter plugin. It gives you the ability to export your media library into a text document, an HTML document, or an XML document. Obviously not the songs themselves, but the titles of them, the artists of them, etc. So we're going to launch Windows Media Player here. And if we go to the tools menu up here and go to plugins and media info exporter, we can choose what we want to export. And if we click on properties, we can uh, choose what file type that we want. So if we go to uh, file type here, you can select best fit for application, text file, HTML, or XML. 
So we'll just leave it as best fit for application, which in this case will create an HTML uh, file. So we're gonna click on export here, all of our music, and there we go. And we can also make a text file if we want to, and we'll choose Notepad here for the application to start and click OK and export. And now we've got a text document with all of that information in it. So yeah, that's basically all there is to it. That is the media info exporter. And now, of course, we get into the Microsoft Plus Dancer. This is one dancer, a Christmas themed dancer that they're making available to everybody. Now this requires you to download a separate installation file. I've got it in this folder here. If we go into Media Player 9, that's this Chris Dancer right here. So the first thing it does is it displays an advertisement for the full program. So we'll click on Start Dancer LE. So you've got pretty much the same menu options in here, but you can see if we go on Select Dancer, we don't have any of the other dancers, only Chris. So we can tell Chris to start dancing and we can move him around there. So there, I just, this program, man, is just so, is just so interesting to me. I, I did a whole video, a whole history video on just the Plus Dancer because I found it so hilariously fascinating. So if you want to check that out, it looked like it was exploding. Like, okay, and he's doing the Macarena. <laughs> what the? Like, okay, that's the greatest thing I've ever seen. An addressed elf doing the Macarena. Okay, so now he's like throwing out presents. And you know what? We're going to, to make this even better, we're going to dance only when music plays. All right, so we'll start playing. It takes a few seconds, and there he is. Okay. This is just like, it, it just makes me wonder why. Like that's the one thing I couldn't figure out in my history video on this is like, I, you know, I was able to figure out uh, the dancers that, because you know, some of these are like live action, like they're actual people, like people dance in front of a green screen and Microsoft shrunk them down to this size and put them on, on your computer. But just why they did it, is still a mystery to me because it's the most bizarre thing like i mean it's it's so hilarious but okay we're gonna have just like we did in the plus digital media edition video we're gonna have him dancing in the background for the rest of the video and just have him there because you can have him uh, be dancing without any music playing in the background so we're just gonna have chris down there uh oh my gosh it's <laughs> It's just, okay, we're gonna spend the entire video talking about this. Let's just move on while we can. So, okay, that's Windows Media Player 9. That's the Windows Media Player 9 fun pack. Moving on to Windows Movie Maker. So this is really interesting to me because these are all additional pieces of content for Windows Movie Maker. It doesn't theme Windows Movie Maker itself like the Windows Media Player skins, but it gives you some winter themed transitions and sound effects and video animations and stuff you could use to throw a video together. So we're gonna launch Windows Movie Maker 2 here and let's go to import. Okay, so we're gonna make an awesome movie here. So we're going to import, let's do one stop. Okay, we're gonna import one stop.mid or again, it's an MP3 converted copy of it. So we'll drag it down to the timeline. And we're going to import some pictures. The only pictures I think I have on here are, well, we do have some additional wallpapers and I'll explain why there's so many folders in here once we get into this stuff here. We are getting a little ahead of ourselves, but you do have, so these are the six wallpapers that it includes. So we can import them. Okay, so there's two transitions and a single effect. So I assume one of these, oh, snowflakes. There it is. So we can add that to here. And okay, there you go. So that is the single effect. And if we go to transitions, we should be able to differentiate these, I'm sure. Let's see what we got. Yep, here you go. Snow burst and snow wipe. And they both have this pixelon.com, it looks like, URL. And I assume that's uh, the company that actually made these and they just let Microsoft throw them into this pack here. We saw the same thing on the effect as well. So if we add, let's go back to show collections here and we'll add the sunset and we'll extend it out and there we go we've got them both added so now oh yeah here we go this is a high quality production oh my gosh dude look at those effects man holy cow dude 
So, all right, let's just take a look at the other one here. There you go. So it kind of reminds me of like fireworks almost. Let's do it again. There you go. And we'll do the snow wipe here. There you go. So yeah, pretty, pretty neat effects. It could definitely give your, definitely give your movie a real 2000s vibe. Uh, so what else do we got to take a look at? Well, those were the transitions and effects. Next up, we've got the music and sound effects. So the sound effects, uh, here's the folder here that they're all in. They're not all winter themed. Like you've got just generic ones like applause. And they're uh, from sounddogs.com. So those are the people who created these sound effects. And yeah, so I think there are some, like you've got, yeah, snowmobile rides. So you've got some winter and Christmas themed ones in here, but most of them are just kind of generic sound effects, which is definitely useful if you were making movies with uh, Windows Movie Maker back in 2003. I mean, honestly, I kind of wish I discovered this back when I was using XP because this could be pretty useful. I mean, just these sound effects alone would be useful for throwing videos together. I mean, because I, I made a lot of videos in Movie Maker before I actually started using a, a much more superior editing software. And, uh, you know, Movie Maker, it's pretty limited as to what you can do, but it was that initial spark that really got me interested in editing videos and just making videos all together. And these sound effects would have definitely been nice to have. But uh, yeah, so there you go. Next up, we've got the video animations. So if we view animations here, these are also videos. So you can just use them for anything. So you got Happy Holidays. So I assume it's gonna, it's gonna do any, yeah, Happy Holidays, there you go. So you got what looks like snow going across the screen, like snowballs maybe? They just look kind of blue to be snowballs. Now uh, you've got Happy New Year Short. Best wishes for a happy new year. And then what is this one? Kiss 500K. Okay, so two people under the mistletoe. And they're going to kiss, I assume. But what's the 500, 500, like 500 Kelvin? I hope it's not 500 Kelvin in there. I mean, Jesus. Seasons greetings, snowball. Seasons greetings, snowman. Snow falling 500. Okay, so this 500K thing is a theme here. You got three other videos with the same suffix. But so I assume it means something. This looks extremely similar to the Happy Holidays one here. And then Seasons Greetings Snowman. Seasons Greetings. And then, okay, they're gonna make a snowman. Isn't that nice? Peace, love, joy. How nice. And then Snow Falling 500K. Your guess is as good as mine as to what 500K means. I assume maybe that's like a coat, like this was pulled from some library and that has some significance to the library, I don't know. But that was snow falling, you've got snowboarding. Oh yeah, definitely getting a ski free vibe from this. Though it's obviously really zoomed in, pretty cool. We got tree 500K. Wow, that is the most boring. <laughs> it's literally just a tree. It's like a Charlie Brown Christmas tree in the middle of, like there's not really, I mean you can, Faintly see there's like sparkles, but that's it. Other than that, it's a completely static image. This wins the award for the most boring one in here. There you go. So those are the animations, which you could use for Movie Maker. You've got winter background images. So let's go ahead and view these. Okay, so we got Candy Cane. We got Happy Holidays. We got Happy New Year. Holidays. Happy Holidays. This is with a winter themed background. Happy Holidays again. Season's Greetings. I skipped one there. Oh, there's the there, there's the boring tree. It literally looks like they just took this image, added took out the happy holidays and added some very faint like snowfall effect to the top. Seasons greetings. Got some nice icicles there. Happy holidays and we're back to the candy cane. So, yeah, you could use those in your Christmas movies. And then finally, we have Windows Mobile Profile Pack. So this is essentially a profile that allows you to export a movie from Movie Maker into a format that could be played on a pocket PC device or a phone running Windows Mobile. If we go in here and we go to Finish Movie and we save to my computer, I believe, let's just go back here. So yeah, save, select My Computer and then Show More Choices in Other Settings. 
So, oh gosh, isn't that beautiful? Classic, of course, it's an MJD video. Of course we have to have something go wrong. Um, so I think when his movie maker has frozen here. All right, I guess we're gonna have to, so trying to save the movie just completely freaked out when his movie maker here. I don't wanna force quit it. We're gonna lose that awesome movie that took me so long to make, guys. I mean, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? I don't want to lose all of that. We're probably going to have to, though. I mean, it doesn't say it's not responding. Oh, no, it does. It's in Task Manager here. Something tells me it's not going to recover, so we're just going to force quit it. Goodbye to all my hard work. Freaking Windows Movie Maker. What a classic Windows Movie Maker thing to do. Uh, so let's just, we can just launch it from here. So we'll just launch Movie Maker 2. Ooh, it found one that was saved automatically. Yes, we want to recover that file. Thank you. Okay, always save. So we're gonna do that right now. Save us to the desktop as my awesome movie. What a title. So, okay, let's try that again. So finish movie, save to my computer. Here we go. So we're going to click on next and then we're going to show more choices, other settings, and here you go, video for pocket PC. So let's go ahead and do video for pocket PC full screen. So again, not something that is winter or Christmas related, but still pretty useful if you had a pocket PC or Windows mobile device. All right, so we're done. Let's hit finish. And there we go. So it's just gonna be a really low resolution so that you could play it back on a pocket PC. Oh my gosh, how beautiful is that? <laughs> Okay, so we're going to close out of that. So that is the Movie Maker Fun Pack. All right, so next up, we're going to get into the digital photography section. And this is where we really get into the customization options that modify not really the Windows interface, like it doesn't change the theme or add mouse cursors or anything like that. But this adds a screensaver and some wallpapers, as you just saw earlier when we were in Movie Maker. But what's really cool is it doesn't just add images that you could use as wallpapers. It adds a Microsoft Power Toy. I think the dancer just crashed. Uh, what? Plus, dancer Ellie cannot start. It was running. Some files required may be missing or corrupted. What? Okay, let's start that up again. I, that was weird. All right, so as I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, thanks, Chris, for <laughs> crashing. Uh, so the Wallpaper Changer is a Microsoft Power Toy that allows you to create a slideshow from multiple desktop images that you have, anything you want to use as your desktop wallpaper. And it's pretty cool how it works, and we'll take a look at it in a moment. We also have some holiday greeting card templates, which you can just take a look at right now because they are just images. Uh, so we'll view the templates here. And so you can use these as really anything. Again, with these images, you can do whatever you want with them, but they were uh, intended to be used on holiday greeting cards. So there you go. Have a ball or an ornament, rather. And yeah, so pretty neat. Wish you were here. And yeah, candy canes. And then Plus Photo Story 2 LE is the other kind of trial plus application that we have in here that you can kind of get a little preview of what Plus Photo Story 2 is like, and we'll take a look at it as well. So starting out with the screensaver, let's go ahead and preview the screensaver. So it launches it immediately. Honestly, like not a lot of motion for a screensaver. And you would think that a screensaver would, you know, have like, a lot of motion because it's supposed to save your screen from screen burning and yet we have a solid border around the entire screensaver so you got a little bit of motion but it's just definitely not really going to do the job as a screensaver literally what it's supposed to do but i mean it, it's nice to look at now for the wallpaper change let's go ahead and launch this here and it immediately changes the desktop background to one of the winter ones this right here is your control panel and you modify all your settings from here in fact if you go into display properties and then right here you see that the current wallpaper that's selected is called wallpaper changer which basically is an image that is controlled by the wallpaper changer here. So what you would do is you would go through here and you would choose whatever images that you want. So we've already got the, the six selected in the wallpaper folder here. So let's say every 15 minutes. And so now every 15 minutes, it will change the desktop wallpaper. Now what's also cool, and the reason why there were all those folders in here, I mean, look at all these folders. You might be wondering what on earth are all these folders in here for? Well, they allow you to use this override wallpaper on special days feature. There is a folder for every single day of the year. <laughs> That's why there's so many in here. And what what you would do 
is today I've got the system time set to uh, December 12th, which is not the correct date. December 12th, 2006. We'll go into pictures and we'll just copy, say, Blue Hills here. We'll copy that over to here. And there you go. Now it says one image for today, December 12th, 2006. So this means that as long as you have this checked, it will not go through with the general slideshow that you have set up. So if you have certain days of the year that you want to be reminded of something, perhaps, or you just want a different wallpaper on that day for whatever reason, this is how you can do that. It's kind of a really convoluted way of doing it, having the drag, like you've got a folder for every single day of the year in here, but it works. And the benefit to this is it's very easy to modify. I mean, you just literally just drag the photos that you want into the respective folder for the day that you want it to change. And that's all there is to it. So yeah, that's the Windows Fun Wallpaper Changer. And just like the Dancer, it will come up with this advertisement for the full version of the program. And we'll just start it here. So if you didn't see the Plus Digital Media Edition video, this essentially allows you to create a movie and it will automatically add panning effects to the images. It's, it's all made from images and I think you can select your own music as well. And then it kind of just generates a movie based on that. It's really just for slideshows, just to kind of make them a little more animated than a static, you know, changing between the images. So we can begin the story here and we'll import photos. Let's just do the, the sample photos here. So we'll add those in and there we go. So we hit next, and then this is where you can narrate over the images that are on screen. And you can have the option to preview it here. You can type a title, so we'll call this My Amazing Photo Story. And this is where you can add background music if you want, so we'll select Acid Jazz here. We can make the volume really high if we want to. You have the option to preview it, or just hit next and choose the video and audio quality. Now high quality, is not an option here. It is an option in the full version. So this is a one of the limitations of Photo Story 2 LE here. We only get medium quality. Audio quality can be high though. And we'll save it to my documents, my videos. That's fine. And we'll let it do its thing. And so it just builds a little movie with those images and that song that we selected and it does just some pan and fade effects so yeah really basic stuff but i mean if you just wanted to throw a slideshow together with a little more jazz than the regular slideshow you can get just from opening up the photos in photo viewer this is how you can do it so it just does some nice pan effects you got the music in the background and of course you can narrate over it if you want to so yeah that's plus photo story and that is, once again, you get the advertisement here, that is the Digital Photography Fun Pack. Last but not least, and this is where things get a little bit interesting, is the Games for Windows XP Pack, because this isn't really a pack at all. And it's not winter or Christmas themed whatsoever. These are just kind of bonus items that Microsoft added in here. And they all have to be downloaded separately by clicking on this visit the Windows XP Extras website. So you'd have to go there and download the components that you want. And with the title of Games for Windows XP, you would think that you know, there's going to be games, right? Well, that actually is not necessarily the case. There's only one complete game that you can download. The other items are theme modifications for Windows XP that are based around games. Like, for example, a Half-Life 2 Windows Media Player skin that I did not know about prior to recording this, and it sounds really cool. You also have a Final Fantasy XI desktop theme. Also had no idea that that was a thing. And uh, Tron 2.0 bonus levels. So that's actually uh, content for an actual game. And for the only complete game in this pack was Zoo Tycoon Card Flip. That could be downloaded as well. Those were the four initial offerings. But as it says right here, new downloads will be added each month. Now I'm not sure about each month, but they definitely added additional content because on the latest version of this page that the Internet Archive has archived in the Wayback Machine, there are three additional download links for a Mist 4 Revelation screensaver, an Unreal Tournament 2004 set of bonus maps, and a Need for Speed Underground media player player skin. So pretty cool stuff. Again, all not winter or Christmas related at all, but pretty cool nonetheless. And we've got the four original items here. So we're going to start out with the Final Fantasy 11 theme. So we'll run this here. At first glance, it looks like it does not make any modifications to the visual style. It looks like it's just the standard blue variant of the Luna theme. Yeah, so just like with the vast majority of the themes that Microsoft released for Windows XP, no modifications are made to the Luna visual style.
style. But you can see we've got a new mouse cursor, we've got some new icons, we've got a new desktop background. We'll just minimize all this here so you can see. And let's see if we got sound. So let's go to run here and type in some gibberish. Yes, we do. So there you go. Okay, so some of these are still, I'm gonna guess the critical, okay, so critical battery alarm is so far the only one that remains the same. Critical stop, default beep. Dang. Sounds like an automaton, geez. Okay. Uh, device connect is the same, device disconnect, same, the same, the same, exit windows is different. Okay, that's the same exact sound as that error sound. Low battery alarm has not been changed. Uh, new mail notification is the same. Print complete is has been unmodified. Program error. Oh, jeez. That's pretty. <laughs> now, okay, full context. I have not played a single Final Fantasy game. So that's why I don't really know where these sound. I mean, obviously, they're from the game. I don't know where they specifically originate from. Uh, hence why I thought one of them sounded like an automaton. Start windows. What is the start window sound? Ooh. Oh, that's fancy, man. That's beautiful. Okay. Uh, system notification. Log off. This is the same. Log off. Okay. Dang. That's some hype right there. Windows log on? Okay, so it's the same to start windows. And that's it. Uh, all of these are just, you know, sounds for other programs. So we'll close out of that. So those are the sounds. You see the new cursor, the new desktop wallpaper, and the new icons. Let's go to my computer here. And okay, so we don't have new icons for any of the folders or the hard disks or the removable devices, but we do have some new icons for my documents. Not for my pictures or my music though, interestingly enough. My computer gets a new icon. Now we're gonna take a look at the, I don't know why I'm going to sample pictures. We're gonna take a look at the zoo card flip game last because i do want to take a look at these two skins first oh my gosh oh that's beautiful wow that's really cool okay so you got the half-life 2 logo which show half-life 2 information oh okay artwork oh so this is more than just a skin for media player you got like some character profiles for the various half-life 2 characters and then you've also got screenshots okay so you got screenshots from the game and then what else do you got web destinations half-life 2 okay so this take you to the half-life 2 website and the windows xp website that's pretty neat and i love this theme by the way this is really cool the like visual style here so okay that's some nice like additional content there and right here okay if you want to open a media file you got your volume control here that's pretty neat. And then here's your, your seek to be able to seek through the song. And then what you got up here, okay, play, stop, next, and previous. You got your window controls here. Down here you got settings, show the equalizer, and dang. Yeah, I really like this, uh, this theme, or this skin rather. And then here's where you can mute it. So there you go, we can skip through the song here. I was definitely not expecting that. I think this is my favorite thing from this theme pack so far, and it's not even, it doesn't have anything to do with Christmas. So <laughs> that's that's pretty hilarious. So, okay, we'll, we'll close out of that. And then we've got the Need for Speed Underground one. Okay, so it looks like we get another intro animation. That's really neat. Okay, so it's pretty much the same size as the Half-Life one, you got your window controls up here, you've got open media file there, your, okay, so this just opens up the visualizations. Is there anything EA like, oh gosh, EA games, that, that really strikes fear in any, in any gamer in the world. Uh, so yeah, you don't get like any additional content by clicking the center button, it just opens up the Need for Speed website, but Oh, wait a second, there you go. Okay, so you click on the eye down there, it opens up Need for Speed Underground information about the game. Okay, so it's got this sound effect or this track playing in the background. Oh my gosh, that is loud. I think we're just gonna mute this. Okay, there we go, it stopped, thank you. Because I'm like, I'm trying to read this here and it's like playing this obnoxiously loud track in the background. So it gives you a little uh, description of the game. Hit the streets in the world's most elite tuner cars and take down the ultimate racers in your own customized machine. And, oh, I, I close out instead of going back to the menu. Oh no, we gotta listen to it again. <laughs> 
All right, story. So it gives you a synopsis of the backstory of the game here. You got screenshots from the game of various cars, so that's nice. And web destinations is probably going to be, yep, the same thing, just like in the Half-Life 2 player, you got Need for Speed Underground. Well, in this case, you've got a shortcut to that website and the window. Oh my gosh, that was my speaker falling over. And you have the Windows XP Extras website, which is not, I wonder if it's the same link, but uh, the other one said XP, this one says XP Extras. So anyways, so yeah, there you go. We'll, we'll play, uh, let's go ahead and open, let's do one stop. So there you go. So there's your, your volume and seat controls here. So yeah, not bad at all. Actually, really cool. I am definitely a fan of these, but I love the Half-Life one. Last but not least, the final item to take a look at today is the Zoo Tycoon card flip game. So I have not played this. I have no idea what to expect. I assume it's a card game of some kind. It's just kind of interesting that they bundled all this stuff with a winter theme pack or a like winter themed set of fun packs. So, okay. You got one option, play, that, that makes it simple. All right, so it looks like we have to match the animals by flipping these cards around, okay. So, okay, so just like a blind matching game, pretty much. So, okay, there's the shark. You sure do know your animals. Yes, I do. Yeah, that's it. That's 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 it. That's all there is to it. Well, guys, there you have it. That is an in-depth look at Microsoft's Winter Fun Packs from 2003 for Windows XP. Definitely a pretty neat little collection of customization options, and even though some of this stuff doesn't really go with the winter theme at all, hey, it's still pretty cool, and it's all free at the end of the day, and you can't beat that. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, if you want to see more like it, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed down below, all that good stuff, and be sure to turn on notifications because there's there's going to be one more video going out before the year is over, and it is the biggest video project to date that I have ever worked on. It's a documentary, over 30 minutes long, and I'm really excited about it, and I can't wait to share it with you all. So stay tuned for that. Date is TBD, but it will be coming out next week before the year is over. As always, guys, I want to thank you all so much for watching. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Early New Year, and I'll see you in the next video.